The mirror principle is one of the most important ideas to understand at a deep level and to apply consistently in accordance to when it comes to reality creation. And this is because it is based on some of the core fundamental principles of the universe and how life works. And when you understand the mirror principle, you can tap into these principles and get them working for you instead of against you. When you start to learn the mirror principle and you start to master it by putting it into application applying it in practical ways, you start to literally become the creator of your reality. And you get to start doing this in a very predictable way that doesn't seem random, but where you do specific things and you get specific outcomes because you did those things. Essentially, you'll be able to predict the effects that you create from the causes that you set in motion. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over what the mirror principle is at a deeper level, how you can start getting this to work in your life powerfully. And I'm of course going to give you some tools and next steps that can take this to the next level so there's no confusion and it's very clear on what you can do. Let's jump into it. Now, the reason I always talk so highly about the mirror principle, because it's one of those fundamental laws of the universe of life that has changed my life rapidly. I learned about it a while ago, kind of in my mid twenties. And it was around the age of 26 that it really just catapulted my life into an almost new reality where I was able to really do things within my inner world to have that reflection in my outer, you know, it allowed me at that age to move to a completely new country and to really build what I needed in the inner world to allow for that to happen, to build a business while I was traveling and going to all these different beautiful places, to attracting in, you know, the perfect partner for me who I'm still with and we're just unfolding in magical and beautiful ways, to having more freedom and peace in my life than I'd ever experienced before, and to continually build on that to this day. You know, to this day now, we still have so many more coming through, you know, with my business thriving and us making way more money through the business, for example, with us being able to move into our dream home and go to even more beautiful locations, being able to have a bigger impact. So much of this I attribute to learning the mirror principle and really learning how to apply it. And this and more is absolutely available to you when you learn how to use the mirror principle properly, when you actually learn it at a deep level, and once you start to actually apply it in practical ways. So I'm going to be going over how it works, but not just giving you fluffy language and things that sound sound nice, which you may see in other things, but actually give you practical steps on how to apply this crucial core principle of the universe. Because the mirror principle is acting out in your life every second. It's just about whether you want to intentionally work with it in ways that benefit you, or you want to allow it to continue to be random and present you with more things you probably don't want. So at its core, the mirror principle essentially states that the outer world that is physical reality, the world we interact with, with the five senses, follows the inner world, the inner world being more the spiritual and mental world. Now, what that means ultimately is that the outer world you are seeing is actually a reflection of what you've been maintaining in the inner world, thus the mirror principle. It is a mirror image of whatever you have been doing in the inner world. It is essentially the effect of the causes you have been engaging with in your inner realm. Now you may think, well, why is that the case? Why is it that what I do on the inner world, you know, you may be the first time you're hearing this or even wondering what that is and we'll cover that, but why is it what happens in my inner world influences what happens in my outer world? Well, actually the biggest reason for this, and this is a scientifically proven fact, is that most of reality that you are aware of even is actually not physical matter reality. You see, physical matter reality accounts for about point zero 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 one percent of what's actually out there where the rest of it is empty space or energy and that makes up 99.999999 percent of reality. That empty space energy is what we cultivate in the inner world, in the inner realm, the thing beyond the seen or the unseen world. This is our spiritual side of us. This is our mental side of us. If you know hermetic wisdom, you know that there are three planes of existence that are often talked about. Yes, we have the physical realm, which we're looking around right now that we perceive with our five senses and is formed and 
comes to us and we can perceive it through those five senses in multiple ways, but it is limited to those five senses. And then there are realms beyond that known as the mental realm, what you can imagine is your thoughts, is what you can do with your mind. You know, the universe is mental. It's a massive part of this. And the spiritual realm, which we can equate mainly to energy, vibration, frequency, and similar things. But you have these three realms in correspondence, and there very much is a hierarchy in something happening on one influencing the other. Now, they all affect and influence each other, but ultimately, physical reality is actually of a like kind to what you find in the spiritual realm. So we can call it energy. So energy is actually a like kind to the physical. Everything you see in this physical world is actually condensed energy. If we were to look at anything, you could choose anything in this room, you could look at yourself, at me, and we put it under the right scientific tools, you would actually see that we're vibrating, that we're not physical uh, in the way that we believe it at all. In fact, we are just energy condensed, vibrating very densely in place, but still energy. Now, the only reason I mention this is to impress upon you the importance of understanding that all of this is coming from the inner world of energy and also of the mental plane of existence. Now, that's important to understand because it means that your thoughts are crucial to creating reality. The energy, or we can call it emotion, energy in motion, that you entertain more often than not is crucial in how you create reality. The visualizations, the image you have in your mind throughout the day is crucial to how you create reality because those are the things combined that lead to the reflection that you see in the physical world. Essentially, to uh, put it in this way, the causes you create and entertain and stick to consistently on the spiritual and mental planes of existence will reflect on the physical plane. You will have to receive back on the physical similar um, manifestations, opportunities, events, people that correspond respond to what you've been doing on the spiritual and mental planes. The outer world, the physical world follows the inner world. One of my favorite ways of putting this and that I, I love to quote is that the outer world is simply your energetic history because it takes a bit of time from energy to turn into what we call matter because it's a more dense form of vibration. You need to focus on something long enough for it to materialize in the physical plane or for those things to be attracted to you, but they will if you stick with it long enough. And so what you stick with consistently in the inner world is what will lead to what you see in your outer world. It is your energetic, your inner world history. Okay, so the outer world follows the inner world. Why is that so many people seem to have an outer world that they dislike, that they, they don't, they're not fans of, right? They don't wanna have the outer world they have. There's a lot of people, maybe yourself included, maybe not, that don't really like what's in their outer world, in their physical existence. Well, why is this? Well, a lot of the time, or actually all of the time, it is because they are thinking about certain things that they do not want. They are in lower, denser emotions most of the time. They are visualizing worst case scenarios or catastrophizing and then reproducing that in the outer world in some form, in some way, in the form of continued negativity or unfavorable events or people annoying them or whatever else it is. And if you were to flip this, that would switch and you would actually have more opportunities, events that were favorable, things that led to the things that you actually wanted. It's just about what are you thinking about and feeling about most of the time. Now, a tool I really love to give, and we give this in our actually our reality creation coaching program, which you can learn more about down below, is what's called the art gallery metaphor. Because one of the biggest things that trips people up when it comes to understanding the mirror principle and especially applying it is resisting what is here. You see, when you resist what's currently in your physical reality and you curse it and you say, I hate this and I don't want this and you're looking at it and you're feeling bad about it and all of this different stuff and you beat yourself up about it, I don't like this person in my life. I don't like my job. I don't like, you know, this event that happened. I don't like my home. I don't like my car. I don't like the location I'm in. I don't like that this person has this and I don't have this or whatever else it is. 
What you're doing is continually recreating more of that in your life because in your inner world, you're focusing on emotion. That's on a denser scale that brings more of that stuff. And you're visualizing these things time and time again. And so one of the biggest tricks to getting the mirror principle to work is to understand that there is a time delay between the physical and the inner world, the outer and the inner world, that you have to assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. You have to give more faith to the vision of what you actually want than the physical circumstances that you're currently in because it takes some, times, uh, some time for things to shift. But so many people are resisting what's already here is they are simply creating a like thing happening over and over and over again. A really prime example of this is you've probably heard this quite a bit time, uh, a few times is that certain people will go in and out of relationships, romantic relationships, and basically date the same kind of person over and over again, even though it never works out. Why is that? It's because they're repeating this cycle, visualizing the same things, complaining about those things, which all it does is put your focus on those things. You're then putting your focus on those aspects of what you didn't like in that person and therefore are attracting more of those people into your life and the cycle repeats. And this works for all areas of life. What you focus on grows. What you focus on in the inner world is what's going to be reproduced in the outer. But if you resist, What's happening in the outer in the sense of you push back against it, you try and force it away or something like that, instead of rooting yourself in your knowingness in the inner world, it will persist, it will keep happening. Ultimately, one of the best ways I've been taught to look at this is when you're resisting the physical, you're literally resisting an energetic history instead of focusing on creating a new history for yourself. Everything in your physical reality is a result of what your inner world was like usually many months ago, but you keep repeating the pattern so it kind of stays constant or seems the same or seems like it's in line and nothing, you know, nothing seems different. Whereas if you were to change your inner world, if you were to start thinking differently, if you were to start feeling differently, if you were start, uh, to start visualizing excitedly and with anticipation that which it is you actually want and you held yourself accountable there, you stayed there long enough, your physical reality would by law, through the mirror principle, through the principle of cause and effect, through the principle of correspondence and so many others, it would have to change. And it would also have to change because of the law of balance, which is the predominant law of the universe, which we are gonna get into in a, a little bit. But again, let me get into the metaphor that I really love to give, and it's called the art um, gallery metaphor. And most people are going through life doing this. It's like they're in a certain gallery in, in an art museum or something similar. And they're looking at the paintings on the wall of this art gallery. And this art gallery is, stands for your life. So these paintings on the wall are the relationships you have, it's the job you have, it's the whatever's in your life is what's on these walls. And how most people treat their life is they look at these paintings. They're in this art gallery and they're looking at these paintings and they hate them. They despise them and they want them taken down. They go up to the, uh, the curator, the art curator, and go, take these down, I don't want these. But you have no right to take down what's already here, what's in the art gallery. But if you start trying to destroy the art gallery, if you start trying to you know, shape it in the way that you want, it's not gonna work out and you're just gonna end up with more artwork on the wall that you don't want. But the easiest thing is, if you don't want, let's say it's Van Gogh, you don't like Van Gogh, and you're a room, in a room filled with Van Gogh paintings or art, and you like Picasso, then go into the room where the Picassos are. And this is where people get it so wrong, is they focus on all the things they hate in their art gallery, which continues to keep them in the art gallery of what they hate instead of just walking out the door and choosing differently. Instead of just walking out the door to a different gallery that they actually enjoy. And this is the biggest tripping point for most people. I want change, but I'm gonna to continue to complain about my current circumstances. Complaining about your current circumstances is the glue that keeps you attached to them. It is the glue that keeps you in the room that you don't actually want to be in when the door is right over there and you could focus on something else. How do you focus on something else? You do that in the inner world through your energy, through your thoughts, through your visualizations, and you ignore the sense data. You have more loyalty 
loyalty to the vision, which is the inner world mechanism here, which is the inner planes of existence. You have more loyalty to that, knowing it will be re uh, reproduced in like kind in the physical, have more faith in the vision than the current physical circumstances. Ignore the sense data. It is simply an energetic history from previous patterns. But if you stop engaging with those patterns, if you stop going into the Van Gogh room and staying there and keeping yourself stuck because you're complaining about everything and just go to a room you want to be in to go into the energies and the thoughts and the visualizations you would rather have, if you do that, then suddenly on your art gallery, pictures and paintings and things you actually want in your art gallery will start to appear. You'll start moving into rooms that are ones you actually want to be in instead of complaining about the one you're currently in, which actually keeps you there. And so do not resist the current art gallery you're in. Do not resist the current physical circumstances you're in. You can if you wish, but let me just tell you with 100% certainty that will not change anything. In fact, it will usually exacerbate it and give you more of the same. Now, this is a crucial step that you're probably not going to hear in many places, and this is called the law of balance. And this is the predominant law of the universe, meaning it's basically the core law of the universe. Even things like law of attraction and many things you've heard are under the umbrella of this law. The universe is always looking to balance things out. And maybe not in the way that you think. I'm going to describe what this means. But this is crucial to understand and it's also why the mirror principle works and why it is so powerful. Because the mirror principle, like I said, states that the outer world follows the inner world. But what's really happening is that the law of balance will balance your outer world to be in conjunction or to be in correspondence with your inner world. What this means is, for example, if you are resisting the art gallery in the current room, so you're complaining all of the time, you know, you're in your inner world thinking negative thoughts, you're feeling negative emotions most of the time, and you're living in those places, maybe visiting positive ones occasionally, but nothing close enough to tip the scale into the positive trajectory. If you're doing that all the time and your inner world is one of negativity, by law, the universe has to balance your outer world with the like kind of what's happening in your inner. There has to be a balance. And so you think negatively, you act negatively. And again, when you can insert anything in here, I'm just using the broad term of negativity because it's easy to follow. Um, you're feeling negative all the time. You're visualizing negatively. Well, you're going to have that balance now in your life as the physical version of those things. But here's the thing. If you were to instead, most of the time, be thinking thoughts that are towards your vision that excite you, to be in positive emotions, to be feeling or thinking better feeling thoughts, to be visualizing the dreams that you're so excited about versus catastrophizing all the things that could go wrong. When you focus on what you actually want instead of thinking about what you don't want, then the law of balance has to go, okay, well, we're now out of balance because let's say your physical reality is the result of years of negativity. So let's say it's right here and I'll put this on screen. But let's say now for a good amount of time, like for the last few weeks, you've been really focused on going into a new room in the art gallery to one that's favorable. You've been really disciplined in changing your thoughts or choosing new thoughts and choosing the new emotions you want to be in. And you're doing this most of the time. You've been feeling and, and um, thinking most of the time thoughts that are actually more towards your vision and what you want to manifest. Well, the law of balance has to go, okay, we're out of balance now because his physical reality or her physical reality, his or her physical reality is one that is from this negativity they used to entertain. But now they're entertaining a whole new reality. So one of two things has to happen. We need to balance this out. One of two things has to happen. Either, and this is what happens to most people and you may be able to relate to this, either certain things, chaos will come up in your life because certain things are being cleared out because again, certain things will need to leave your physical reality to make room for this new level that you're moving into. But that'll happen and people will get scared. And so they'll go from this new level they've been developing in the inner world and their inner world will come back down to match their current physical circumstances. And then the universe goes, oh, balance has been maintained. Now they're on the same level again. They went up here for a bit, but boom, they're back here and now it's maintained. But here's the second way things can balance and the way you want to go for the thing we're aiming for and how we get the mirror principle to work for us. We stay up here energetically in the inner world. Some chaos happens in the physical because it has to, to clear out the old, to make room for the new. But you stay calm during the storm. You embrace the bends that life brings you because you know you're on path. You stay in that new room instead of going back to the old art gallery and complaining again. And the law of, uh, the law of balance goes, okay, 
So they're not coming back down. We need to go up. We need to bring their physical up now to match it. And this is when things will literally come out of nowhere to start matching your new vibration, your new inner world vibration from the spiritual and mental realm that you're giving off will have to be matched in the physical if you don't come back down to match the previous physical you were in. And so that means new people are gonna come in. New events that are more attuned to what you've been maintaining will come in. Opportunities will start coming out of nowhere. You know, in the financial realm, in the spiritual realm, in the mental realm, in the, again, the relationship realm, new things have to start coming in to balance out this new energy that you are in. And here's the magic of this. In six to eight weeks of focused particle flow, think of focused particle flow of maintaining a positive inner world. So you're thinking good thoughts, you're feeling good emotions most of the time, you're focusing on your vision, you're visualizing that. Six to eight weeks of doing that leads to dramatic changes in the physical world. This is called the Newtonian or, or the quantum to Newtonian transition point. S focusing on something in the quantum world, the inner world long enough for there to be a transition to where it appears in the Newtonian, which is the physical world. Six to eight weeks leads to dramatic changes. The great thing is you will start noticing changes before that, but six to eight weeks is dramatic changes when you have focused particle flow in a particular direction. So you are potentially six to eight weeks to a completely new reality, a completely new life when you learn how to do this and stick with it. Another analogy I'll give you is probably one you've heard. And I actually have a free case study about my reality creation program, which will absolutely have you uh, doing this in the highest levels if you want to check that out. Where I go over this analogy too in a little more depth, but I'll give you, uh, and you can get that down below for free, first link. Um, but let me give you uh, just a little bit of it here. And essentially, the, the radio station analogy basically says you cannot receive you know, songs or manifestations that are on a different frequency or a different radio station than what you're on. So for example, if you're on 91.1 radio station, you're not gonna get songs that exist on 101.1. So let's say 91.1 um, equals the negative frequency vibration, right? So let's say that's the station you're on. You're gonna get songs, which just means manifestations, means you know more thoughts, more feelings, and everything else that correspond with that station. You're never going to get the life you want on that station because it's not the right frequency. And so people complain and they, they think they have to force their way to do it, but as long as you're on that station, nothing will change because that station only has a certain bandwidth to bring you certain things. But if you change the station, and the station represents the inner world, if you tune into 101, 101.1, and let's say that's the positive station, that's where the people you want in your life are, that's the, you know, the level of growth you want, that's the level of finances you want, etc., etc. Once you tune into that station long enough, then you will start receiving the manifestations that correspond with that frequency, that station. Now the songs that are coming through will be songs of abundance, opportunities of abundance, and so on and so forth. Right? But if you don't change the station, if you don't choose a new room in the art gallery, you're not going to ever start receiving that which you actually want. You have to change the inner world, the inner radio first, tune into the station you want to be in, ignore the sense data that just has come through because you've been on a certain station for so long and now you've changed it. Chaos will come up because it's removing the results that you got from the previous station. It has to clear those out because they no longer correspond with the vibration you're on. And then new things from that station will start coming in. And the longer you stay there, the more that starts to grow in your life. Now, a really great tool for you that you can use, a really great exercise that you can use is asking yourself the question, who do I need to become, especially in the inner world, in order to start creating a new energetic history? Because remember, it is inner to outer. The outer follows the inner. And so you need to become hyper aware of what is it I need to do in the inner in order to transform my outer. Who do I need to become? What are the traits? What are the beliefs? What are the thoughts? What does the person I need to become think about? How do they feel most of the time? What do they visualize, right? You know, what do they engage with in their day-to-day -day life? Is this someone who engages in distraction a lot and gets distracted? Or is this someone who focuses? Is this someone who looks after their mental, um, spiritual, and physical planes? Or do they just give credence to one and forget the rest? Is this someone who, you know, gets very clear on what their purpose is, and if they aren't, goes down the path of discovering that, or is this someone who just goes, ah, it's okay, I'll just leave it up to chance. 
right? And so get very clear on what that is for you. Really almost map out this higher version of yourself. You know, what you would want in your life and what would you need to do in order for that to come in? Because you don't get what you want, you get who you are. You get what you are. And so it's all about who you need to become in order to bring about what you want. And the trick is not to wait till you become this because that's never gonna happen. You have to do your best to be it now. And so writing out what that entails will give you a list, will give you a roadmap essentially going, okay, the person I need to become is someone who is much more rooted in positive emotions. Let's look at shadow work so we can uproot some of these old beliefs, for example. Let's look at certain affirmations that I can wake myself up and stay uh, or say out loud when I'm going into a negative thought pattern. Maybe I'm gonna learn how I can move up the emotional scale um, so we can use the Hawking scale of consciousness so that I get to a better feeling place more quickly instead of trying to leapfrog from one thing to another, which is very hard to do. And so this is an actual exercise. I am inviting you to actually start writing this down and to start journaling about this. Almost have like this avatar of who you need to become, what are their attributes, and then start uh, you know, finding ways you can do that in your everyday life. Now, one of the best tools I can give you um, in, in really getting this to work is a deeper understanding of the law of balance. I know we covered it a little bit here, but I would go watch this video next because I dive deep into the law of balance. I also give some tools on how to apply it, which will help you apply the mirror principle. It is so crucial. It is the predominant law of the universe. And so I would really go watch this next. It'll give you an incredibly deep understanding of how this works.